morning and welcome back to our virtual Bible Summit. We are three lessons into our 13-day lecture series. Uh, we began at 7 a.m. with Jacob Hudgens. We then went to Shane Carrington at 8 o'clock. And now we're going to go way down south into McAllen, Texas with Warren Berkeley, who preaches for the Laurel Heights congregation down there. And Warren brings a unique perspective to his lesson. Not only is he a preacher at the Laurel Heights congregation where he's doing almost daily Bible studies and podcasts and things like that, but he's also an elder for the Laurel Heights congregation. And so he's active in assisting the congregation there and tending to a lot of needs. And so Warren's sermon, even though it's probably going to be one of the shortest today, I think it clocks in about 19, 20 minutes. Even though Warren's sermon is one of the shorter uh, lessons that we're going to have today, it's very rich in applications, very rich in practicality. If you've never met Warren before, uh, you may be kind of disarmed by his very dry sense of humor. But Warren has a big, gigantic heart uh, for helping other people and for preaching the gospel. He's done that for probably close to 40 or 50 years. He has such a huge capacity and such a huge love for helping other people. And he's one of my personal mentors. When I first started preaching, Warren was one of those guys that has reached out to me uh, very, very often, offered me any kind of assistance, any kind of help that I may need. And so Warren is not only one of our speakers today, but he's also a good friend of mine. And so I'm, I'm privileged to have Warren preach on our lecture series today and preaching a lesson called Helping Our Seniors. I really appreciate Warren talking about this subject because the, our senior saints are those members of our congregations that are sometimes, I don't want to say forgotten because no, no members are forgotten. But sometimes in our hustle and bustle of everyday life, we go about our daily life and we forget about certain types of people, certain groups of people. And certainly in coronavirus, when we're all kind of shut up inside of our homes, we don't get to interface with each other on a weekly basis. Our, our seniors are sometimes those people who pay the price for that. And so I really appreciate Warren talking about this, practical ways that we can help them during this quarantine time. And so I would encourage you to open up your ears, open up your hearts, and open up your Bibles to Warren's lesson called Helping Our Seniors. I'm so thankful for Brady, his colleagues in this project, and the others who are presenting material very specific to this crisis. I'm gonna be talking about helping our senior saints during the crisis. But I'm really including any senior citizens you were able to safely help in your neighborhood, in your family, in your circle of acquaintances. And according to common definition, I am a senior citizen at the age of 72, but I'm not disabled, I'm mobile. I have a work schedule as a preacher that affords me opportunity to reach out to seniors in need as an elder, a local preacher and a senior citizen. I've had a lot of recent experience and I'll share that with you. But first, we need to listen to God. In his word, there is so much about serving people, elderly and widows in particular. I'm sure you haven't missed that. You know all those passages, but isn't this a good time to review what the Bible says and then apply that with urgency in this present situation. So I've assembled a number of passages I'll read and then make some observations. And the plan is to take all of that to present application today. Just start with what we generally refer to as being a servant. I'm going to read Matthew 22, 37 through 40. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Love, as expressed first to God, will always involve all the obedient activity God has directed his children to be engaged in. Then love as expressed to your neighbor will likewise involve all the obedient activity God has directed his children to be engaged in. So love serves an extremely simple concept that we teach little children. Love obeys God and love that obeys God serves our neighbors. 
as this love for your fellow man is applied, it may become inconvenient. It may be very difficult. Hebrews 13 and verse 16 says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. I may have to give something up, even more than time and energy, yet with such sacrifices I have this assurance God is pleased. Then to that I will add the dimension of service that we extend to brothers and sisters in Christ. Galatians 6 and verse 10, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Now, what we're talking about here is not just an exhibition of humanitarian involvement, nor is it something to receive applause. Here's the depth of what this is. Jesus said in Matthew 25 that when we serve in these ways, we do it unto him. Matthew 25, 35, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. So these passages inform how we should think and how we should respond in loving and serving people. Paul said, especially those who are of the household of faith. Now, we're talking about something very clear and very simple. And as I mentioned earlier, this is one of the first lessons we teach children. I'm 72, and these are things I started hearing when I was two. But I not only heard it, I saw it in my parents and in the local church. Let me add another level to this. Loving and serving God and loving and serving others is not something we suspend or neglect when we are under pressure. In 2 Corinthians, there is such a dramatic example of generosity even when the givers were under pressure. Paul is urging brethren to respond to a need and of the Macedonians, he says, in 2 Corinthians 8, they had their own problems, affliction and poverty, yet they did what they could. In fact, with such abundance, Paul said, they gave beyond their means. And you know what Paul connects this to? The grace of God. I tell you. People who are grateful recipients of God's grace show that grace in crisis. We extend to others the grace we have received from God. Loving and serving God and loving and serving others is not something we suspend or neglect when we are under pressure. You do what you can with what you have, yes, even in crisis. But these Christians in Macedonia, Paul said, gave beyond their means of their own accord, influenced to do so by the grace of God that got them out of sin. All right. Let's step further into this idea of service, benevolence, and response to need. There are places in Scripture, well known, I think, where God expresses a special interest in the elderly, for instance, widows. This is apparent throughout all dispensations, but here are two familiar passages. James 1, 27. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. This is not about building institutions and funding them to do these things. Just as you cannot set up an organization to keep you unspotted from the world, this isn't urging us to do that with reference to the classes of people mentioned. This is individual action and is a part of that overall idea of serving God and serving others to the best of our present ability. Likewise, in 1 Timothy 5, there is a section there where Paul writes about the care of widows who are not otherwise cared for by the family. The family, the relatives, are the first responders. 
Should that resource be absent, the church is to come to their aid. Again, this is not an immediate call to build something to fund. It is a call to handle need by those in the spiritual family. God has directed us in these matters, and those influenced by the grace of God want to do this even when we have our own responsibilities and problems. Now, we have to take this principle and drill down into very specific task to come to the aid of elderly folks even though we are suffering. I have five examples of what we can do to help our elderly family members, Christians and neighbors in this time. Number one, maybe the first thing you think about groceries. Meals on Wheels may not be operating in some communities. You may need to be their Meals on Wheels. What some of us in the church here did this week was call our seniors and get a list of their common household commodities. Then go to the store for them and safely bring those goods to the door. And then make arrangements for those commodities to be replenished after a few days even seniors who have been somewhat mobile. We don't want them to have to navigate the parking lots and the lines outside of grocery stores. Now, there are online grocery apps that deliver. My wife and I have used one this week. But you may need to help senior citizens navigate those apps or order with your account. This is simple and obvious. They need food. Number two, prescriptions. Most seniors take medications. Some, due to chronic conditions, have a whole list of medications. Can we safely pick those up for them? Can we help them call and make delivery arrangements? Our pharmacist tells us to call in and pay over the phone and then come to the pharmacy and they will bring the prescription to the car. We can certainly check to make certain our older folks have what they need in terms of their medicine. Number three, household chores. Some seniors have people come in to do their household chores that they are unable to do. I know that we have to consider health risk, but is there a safe way we can figure this out? Be aware of their in-house needs in terms of safety and common chores. Number four, help them spiritually. Pray with them, perhaps on the phone. If it can be figured out safely, worship with them, read the Bible with them. Christians in crisis figure out ways to do these things. There is a creativity that spiritually minded people can access in time of crisis. And let me add here, there may be seniors who either do not have any digital connection or internet, or if they have it, they may be uncertain how to use it. They may need help. You may need to help them set up the ability to watch a live stream from your local church. This is very important. If you have elderly members in nursing homes or assisted living facilities, which may now be closed to visitors, can you contact them through your phone? See if the facilities have made arrangements for something like FaceTime or something like Skype or Zoom. Help them spiritually. Number five. Some of our senior members and neighbors just need help understanding what is happening. I called someone a week or so ago, and this frail sister in her 90s had no idea there was such a crisis going on. I went to the store for her and took pictures of empty shelves, and I showed those pictures to her on my phone when I delivered her groceries and she was shocked, and she cried. Now, 
don't assume that your seniors don't know, but within the framework of conversation, you'll be able to discover that perhaps they are unaware of the full impact of what's happening. Some are hard of hearing. Vision may be impaired. Many I know are not inclined to watch the 24-hour news cycle and may not have much contact with the outside world, with relatives, relatives who may live at some distance. You may need to be the informer, the explainer. You may need to be their trusted media. So, those who love God and love their fellow man understand what responses are needed about our seniors and I have reviewed with you five examples, groceries, prescriptions, housework, spiritual help, and conversations to help them understand what's happening. Now, two more things. While we firmly believe that family holds the first obligation, in some cases that just doesn't happen and we can't fix that. There may be an elderly couple or a widow, and they have kids or grandkids, but either they live at some distance away or in some sad cases, they live nearby, but they are busy and not as responsive as they need to be to their parents or grandparents. That is sad but you can't dive into the middle of family dynamics and fix all of that. And you can't just sit at home and say to yourself, well, their kids ought to do that. They have kids. No. Listen, please. 1 John 3, 17. If anyone has this world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Yes, the Bible teaches that family members have first responsibility, but don't just park on that and let people starve. And don't nag the older people about it. Just see to their needs. Make sure they have what they need. And then I wanted to add to that, enlist volunteers to help. If you have, let's say, five senior members you've identified that need the kind of help I'm talking about, don't wear yourself out taking care of all five. Get volunteers. Check with the elders or deacons. Call people and ask for help to take care of these people with good personal attention while maintaining safety under these current circumstances. In the comments section below, or whatever other means has been arranged, discuss these ideas. Offer suggestions and bring up things I haven't included you may be aware of. I tell you, I put this material together quickly, so I'll not hesitate to ask for your ideas and entertain your questions. We have responsibility to God and to his people, to our fellow man, to our neighbors and family members. And may I add one more dimension of motivation for this kind of care. Think back through your life. How did you get where you are? Did you have parents? grandparents, aunts and uncles and preachers and elders and school teachers, on and on, who made valuable contributions to your life. Where are those people now? Where are those kind of people now? These are the people of the previous generation who live today and you depended on them, we depended on them, to send us out into life with good examples and training. Where are they now? They may need you now. That generation deserves our help 
in these very troubled times. I'll bring up again the point I made earlier that this may involve difficulty and sacrifice. Remember, in Hebrews 13, 16, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. D. Bowman, in his book, The Joy of Growing Old in Christ, says, one day, what you give to others will make a difference. It can make a difference now, and it can make a difference later. Would you please consider how you can make a difference and help our seniors? <music>